One of the things that came up over and over again is we have to find new ways of expressing what we're teaching. And in particular, three words were brought up. You know, we don't go around saying, you're living in sin, or you're intrinsically disordered, or you're a terrible person, or we don't use words of condemnation. We recognize the reality that people are living in, and we find ways of saying, you can be better, you can be more, there's something else waiting for us. And that's the whole purpose of this. It's, it's a change. It's looking at things in a different way, as Pope Francis is teaching us. All right, a closed-door meeting with 200 bishops and the Pope revealing a monumental shift is underway in the Catholic Church. Francis urging members to be more inclusive and accepting to gays and those living together. Is this a huge victory for Pope Francis? Let's bring in Rebecca Thompson and Jeremy Larishler. Good to have you both. Good to back. Can, can we call this a win for the Pope? I mean, he is such a refreshing breath of fresh air, as I say that, but there would be a lot of Catholics who say, shut up, Alex. Well, <clears throat> a lot of people have very differing views in, in the Catholic world. And, you know, this is um, a Pope who clearly, since the get-go, has uh, exposed himself as being different than previous popes. So for him to come out and do this is very consistent with him trying to reach out and, uh, you know, and uh, tap into, uh, into something very different from what we've seen in the past. Some have come around. I mean, look, you look at our Michael Corrin, who's taken a, had one mm -hmm. position, let's say, two years ago, mm -hmm. um, and has completely changed and evolved in his opinion on this matter. But you still have a lot of Catholics, Jeremy, that absolutely will not accept this. Oh, oh absolutely, and it's a divisive issue, but I give this Pope a lot of credit because I think what it's showing is that there's been a huge sea change in society. I mean, you point out to Michael Corrin and many others, granted, there's still a lot of divisions. You know, not everyone is uh, supportive of same-sex marriage, but the, the sea shift has been quite decisive. And I think this Pope realizes, and he's been very consistent since the get-go, that the Catholic Church <laughs> needs to modernize in order to be in touch with people in the 21st century. And to the extent that it doesn't yet approve a same-sex marriage, I, even though I do personally, I would say is sensible because we understand that religious institutions often move at a glacial pace. He's likely exceeding that, but these are changes that to make the keep the Catholic Church relevant to many of faith that are, are gay, yeah. that these changes are necessary and welcome. I will say this, um, I'm Anglican, and so I come from a church that is sort of grassroots bottom up in terms of, uh, in terms of its administration, in terms of its governance, in terms of its policy decisions. The Anglican Church dealt with this issue uh, nearly two decades ago. In fact, they are now allowing gay marriage in the Anglican Church. Now, that said, the Catholic Church is the largest Christian church in the world, uh, and so I don't think that the Pope is doing this because he's worried about people leaving the Catholic Church uh, because it is so huge. But if you are, for example, gay and you're, you happen to be raised Catholic, you may consider leaving the Catholic Church and joining the Anglican Church or joining some other Protestant church and maybe that's a threat to the Pope. Now, that's a theory. I maybe don't know if that's Maybe he's just a true. nice guy. Uh, and I'm not suggesting that those who don't believe in gay marriage are not nice people, but maybe he's just that understanding and that ahead of his times that he says, look, we are wrong and we are failing each yeah. other if we don't accept Possibly that. because he says that homosexuals have gifts and qualities to offer the Christian community. Are we capable of welcoming these people, guaranteeing them a further space in our communities? So maybe that's true, well, Alex. What this Pope is making very clear is that you know, there's going to be divisions within, within scripture and within ideology, but that you have to make all welcome within your faith, uh, regardless of divisions. And I think for too long the Catholic Church has moved slowly. I'd say society did, but there's been a groundswell. And, you know, religious institutions are rooted in society. And clearly there are, you know, when you're the Pope, there are political considerations and that you have many different factions, but it's a humanistic move. It is the right move. And um, I'm very happy. It personally. also differentiates him with some of the Ex radical extremism we've seen around the world, um, you know, for example, jihadists dismissing the idea that you can offer freedom to uh, those in the gay community. Well, ISIS has just penned a letter to him, you know, promising him that, you know, he'll be taken out. I mean, he, he, I don't know if this is a timing issue for him where he wants to really say, hey, look, we're fighting extremism now on a scale that is threatening humanity as a whole. And so maybe that's why uh, now is the timing of doing this. I don't know. 
Uh, that, that could be a factor. My sense is that the larger factor at play is just where society has gone and the evolution within society on this topic. I mean, this doesn't come out as a surprise. I mean, uh, last year uh, he made the remarks uh, on an airplane saying, you know, that the, the church ought to welcome homosexuals yeah. into the... So, so it's consistent with where he has been since the beginning of his papacy that he chose this moment. I mean, I can't speculate. Uh, and the, the insights that you bring out in terms of extremism around the world probably play a role, but my sense is that they weren't necessarily the motivators, but it's all part of the I think where this could play out, and I did go to a Catholic church on Sunday because my fiance is Catholic, <laughs> although it's French, so I hardly understood anything. But I think where this could play out over time is during the homilies, because the liturgy is not going to change in the Catholic church. It's going to stay the same. But where this may play out is during the homilies, where you know you may have families or gay people in the audience and the priests will be able to address them in a way that is sanctioned by the Pope and in a way that's more welcoming. I think this is going to speak yeah. to them. We will see. All right.